Good early evening to you ladies and gents, hope you're all well. And we're on Adam Street, WC2. And this here is the house of Sir Richard Arkwright, 1732 to 1792. Industrialist and inventor lived here. <coughs> Arkwright is most famously known for being the creator of the water frame for spinning cotton, basically from water power and is really the father of the modern factory system as we know it today. So this is his house. As we leave Adam Street we go on to John Adam Street and we see there the, the Adelphi. Bear that in mind. Or rather bear the underneath of it in mind. Some fine Georgian houses here you would have had to have money then and now to, to live here. This is a fine building coming up here. The Royal Society for the Promotion of Arts and French Arts or something like that is. This is the Adelphi. Bear that in mind, we will go underneath there. This building here, beautiful building. Arts, commerce promoted. It does have a plaque which I'm zooming on, which says, uh, the House of the Society for the Encouragement of Arts, Manufacturers and Commerce. Foundation laid 28th of March 1772, completed 24th of April 1774. Robert and James Adam Architects. that one with another blue plaque before we go on to our next location. It's pointing this way. Down a sec. There we go. Alright. This house on the corner is <coughs> and where we're going in a minute but Robert Street. Very Robert Street in mind. Another blue plaque, which I didn't know about. The Women's Freedom League. I didn't know about this one, if I'm honest with you. Campaign for women's equality from here, 1908 to 1915. So I didn't know about that one. As we come over towards here, towards Durham House Street, this house on the corner, or a house that would have stood on its site, is our next blue plaque. Thomas Rowlandson, 1757 to 1827, artist and caricaturist, lived in a house on this site. Where I'm taking you to is not York Buildings, because if we walk down here, turn right, and it's less than a one minute walk from here, is the house of Samuel Pepys in Buckingham Street. But that's not where I'm taking you to. Where I'm taking you to is this little buried away piece of London's dark history. These houses, the York Buildings and the Adelphi, underneath which we're going to be walking in a minute when that was originally built in the 1700s it was built as a complex of fine gentlemen's houses and this was basically just a culverted street <clears throat> underneath it so a little of the history of that now sandwiched between the strand and victoria embankment running through a twisting tunnel lower robert street is a covert cut through which cabbies sometimes like to use if in the area and wishing to make a quick exit down to the Victoria Embankment. Apart from the echo of the odd taxi or bike courier, the archaic lane is pretty much devoid of any other traffic or people. In recent years, Lower Robert Street 
its grotto-like appearance has gained it the nickname of the Bat Cave. Lower Robert Street dates back to the late 18th century, created as a byproduct of the Adelphi, a large housing development consisting of 24 grand terraced houses. The project was developed by four Scottish brothers, John, Robert, James and William Adam, whose fraternal blonde blessed the scheme with its name Adelphi being the Greek word for brothers. Construction began in 1772, with many of the labourers who worked on the project also being Scottish. When the Adelphi and its vaulted street were being built, music for the toiling workers was provided by a group of specially employed bagpipers. Because it was so close to the river and the Thames, the Adelphi was located on a slope. The main building, a row of ornate houses, remained level with the strand, jutting out over the incline. To fill in the large void below, a complex of vaulted arches and subterranean streets were created, of which Lower Robert Street is now the only remaining example in practical use. Many famous people lived in the grand apartments above, including the actor David Garrick, Richard de Oilycart, <clears throat> founder of the nearby Savoy Hotel, Charles Booth, the great Victorian social reformer, and a, notal, uh, a number of notable literary figures, including George Bernard Shaw, Sir J.M. Barry, and Thomas Hardy. The Adelphi, and in particular its subterranean lair which lurked beneath, was also mentioned in Charles Dickens' 1850 masterpiece, David Copperfield. So what had started life as a vaulted underground street in an affluent area would later in line with much of Victorian London's twisting underground roads become a haven for beggars and criminals. As one historian noted, the most abandoned characters of often passed the night beneath the Adelphi, nestling upon foul straw. Here we see the Adelphi Terrace in the 1790s and also in 1792 to 1801 and uh, sorry 1790s and in 1901. This is what became of it. The remains of the demolished Adelphi Terrace in 1936 with buildings in John Adams Street beyond which we walked down that building that's most prominent in the middle is the Society for the Promotion of Arts and Franchise. That's the one we walked by. But look, you can see all the vaults and everything that were underneath here, including Lower Robert Street, which is the one, the largest one over to the right. Um, the houses are all gone and everything, but Lower Robert Street remains. Unsettlingly, and perhaps unsurprisingly, Lower Robert Street, which once an ingrained part of this depressing area has its own resident ghost, the phantom known as Poor Jenny, a prostitute who lived and worked in the depths of Lower Robert Street, the bed upon which she languished being no more than a grotty pile of rags. It is said that late one night Jenny was throttled by one of her clients. Today her screams and gasps can be heard echoing through Lower Robert Street. The awful noise accompanied by a rhythmic tapping, the sound of Jenny kicking the floor as she fights against the strangulation. Perhaps this is just one of the reasons why the powers that be chose to close the road every night between midnight and 7am. That it also became um, a sleeping area for homeless people, which was another reason, bearing in mind as we walk through here that certain parts of the Adelphi Hotel are easily accessed through this so that's another reason and another reason where it did attract ghost hunters in, in <laughs> who, who was obviously trying to contact poor Jenny and that's Lower Robert Street for you that's history now shall we have a walk under the Adelphi and through this haunted underground street and we shall listen carefully all the way through well, I hope you all found that interesting and we shall now walk 
underneath Lower Robert Street. And our opening image, the old buildings were level with that there. In modern times, it's become known as, oh shit, let me jump. It's become known as the Bat Cave. about poor Jenny didn't we and it is said to be haunted under here they close it between 12 a.m. and 7 a.m. each night it is said to be extremely haunted and you are said to hear the screams and unfortunately the death throes of poor Jenny it smells like sewage down here the way we've come from. Just in there is the Adelphi which takes you underneath their basements and everything. Yeah. Don't know whether you heard Paul Jenny or not. Or anyone else like her. This lonely and somewhat deserted road takes us out onto Savoy Place. You've got Victoria Embankment Garden there. And the Savoy. A little old house tucked in away there. And we will walk back through to end off this video and see. It's interesting, it goes all up in there and into all different hidden depths and parts of the Adelphi. When the embankment was built, there were more of these um, Culverted streets, underground streets around here, and when the embankment was built, a lot of them were lost. doorway there. It would have been into some of the old buildings and that. Hmm. I shall watch back with interest. I don't think we heard anything or saw anything but you never know. I've known stranger things. That ladies and gents is at Lower Robert Street. Now for a historical look back at some of the places and things that we've seen on our little journey here. And for our historic look back on this part, in Adam Street, the house of Sir Richard Arkwright, the famous industrialist. Here is the man himself, Oil on Canvas, by Matha Brown, 1790. Here's a little information on Sir Richard Arkwright. Pause to read if you want. I'll stay on this for a minute or two or a few seconds and then you can pause or just carry on watching. Moving on now. Here is Sir Richard Arkwright's first factory, really the world's first industrial world's, shall we say, first factory.
And here is that water frame that he invented that made him so famous. What we have to remember about Richard's factory system is that it was built off of the backs of those who were much more unfortunate than himself and a lot of them children. And a lot of these children were killed in some bloody nasty industrial ac accidents. The youngest ones would be sent underneath these machines and they were known as fluffers or pickers to pick up the loose bits of cotton and they would often be dragged into the machinery, often enough for it to have been noted upon. Um, no workers' rights or anything like that, really, to speak of. So that's Sir Richard Arkwright and his house for you. Looks well fed, doesn't he? And our next location on Robert Street, which is the blue plaque, the impromptu one I didn't know about, which is on the 19th of September 2023, so not too long ago, together with members of the Feminist Society of Ibstock Place School. This is what this lady said. I unveiled the one, these are the ladies who are unveiling it, the 1000th English Heritage Blue Plaque. It commemorates the Wounds Freedom League and is mounted on the wall of their sometime headquarters, number one, Robert Street, The Strand. Mrs. Despard and Mrs. Gobden Sanderson waiting for Mr. Athsquith, August the 19th, 1909. Women's Freedom League, number one, Robert Street, Adelphi. Bit of interesting history there for us. Our next one, which was uh, not a blue plaque as such, but it's this lovely old building, which was the Royal Society for the Promotion of Arts. Here we see this picture of it that I took. This is a screenshot. And our historical one is this one. We saw the um, this earlier, but I like this image. So it shows it there in 1936 with a lot of um, Robert Street and everything like that pulled down and such like but here we are is our building there and this one which we come up to as we walked along with our next blue plaque which was for Thomas Rowlandson artist and caricaturist lived in a house on this site I can find no images of the original house but here is the man himself Thomas Rowlandson some information about him once again I'll stay on this for a few seconds pause to read if you want I'll let you know when we're moving on moving on now and here is one of his caricatures um, a seesaw this is called the pole this one a seesaw representing the election taking place between Ray and Fox at the polling booth behind them at Covent Garden. Mrs. Hobart is one on the left side of the seesaw and Lord Hood and Sir Cecil Ray standing beside her and the Duchess of Devonshire is on the right side with Charles James Fox standing beside her. And of course we mustn't forget Lower Robert Street, we covered its history so we won't go through that again. And most importantly, a remembrance, and there are no images of her, of course, bless her, of poor Jenny. And we'll remember her with some forget-me-nots. I hope you all found this one interesting, ladies and gents. Thanks very much for watching.